the inverse of that was was uh, in the in the Asia crisis, and we were getting went to Asia in the in the mid '90s uh, and started looking for uh, for good businesses in uh, in um, in Asia, and particularly in Korea and in uh, Thailand, Hong Kong. And uh, we, we luckily we could see there were real financial issues developing in uh, in Asia, so we we didn't do much um, initially. But what, what, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But what, what took you to Asia in the first place? Yeah. So um, I was really lucky. I have a good friend named Gifford Combs, who was going over there with um, uh, some people that were in, uh, involved with Soros, and uh, he was kind of tagging along, and he invited me to come. He said, you won't believe the, the value. You won't believe what's going on here. You won't believe the valuations. And, and I, I want to come back to this because it, it's part of, part of one of the, the ways we look at good businesses. Um, the Asian economies were all growing. And in those days, Korea was growing really fast. Thailand was growing fast. Yeah. And I hadn't seen anything like this. This is really the growth of these economies and therefore some of these businesses was quite, quite exciting. Uh, and so... We went and looked, and, and I, we could go into great detail about all the stuff we looked at. But the point is, in the, in the Asia crisis, per se, um, we, we basically avoided most of that. Uh, but I started buying stocks as the Asia crisis pushed, pushed things down. And there was a, there was a small brokerage firm uh, in Korea. It was run by a guy who was actually a North Korean refugee who'd been there. And he came over and he had this small brokerage firm. And we got to know these people pretty well. We talked to them a lot. And the stock was a it was a simple um, balance sheet with mostly bonds, um, government and corporate bonds, uh, and some cash. And then it was leveraged three or four to one. You know, Bear Stearns was 30 to one. Yeah, these right. guys were three to one. Uh, and when the, the crisis hit, all the brokers, because of their brokers and the stocks went down dramatically. So this thing was at about 60% of book value and it pretty quickly went down to 30% of book value. Well, that's, that's pretty attractive. So yeah. I bought some more. Um, and then it got cut in half. And this, by now, you know, Korea is just collapsing. This was late, whatever it was, 98. Yeah. And this was real. And I, I, I knew the company. I knew the balance sheet. It's, there's nothing wrong with this with this stock. There's, it's fine. So I, I bought quite a bit more. And with, within a month, it got cut in half again. So we're now down to like eight or nine percent of book value. Yeah, I, I've never seen anything like this. These are these are leveraged bond portfolio at, at high quality bonds at nine percent of book value. So. I, I, I bought some more, and ultimately it worked out. The stock went up ten times. But 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 mentally, I, I, this is what I'm so fascinated about because this is, you know, the, the modus operandi of a, of, a, of a short seller of a value investor, big pardon, is is clear. It, it's straightforward, and it looks so easy. As I said that when I'm talking to Dave Ivan, it sounds so simple. It looks so easy, but the battle up here, even though you know that company, you know the balance well, sheet, you know the people. Dumb. How do you? How do you deal with that when, when yeah. you've had something cut in half and half and half and half? Well, I was, I'll tell you, it was, it was scary. I, well, I, won't, I don't want to sugarcoat it. But I think this is one of the things that, that, that we do, I think a lot of value guys do, that's different than most others. And that is we're very much involved in the research. Yeah. We're very much involved in, in looking at the company, talking to the management. Uh, and that gives you a level of confidence in what this really is. Yes. And I think one of the things that... that Bear markets scare people out of positions because they don't really have confidence in what it is that they're owning yep. or buying. And so we think it's really important that portfolio managers are also analysts and and uh, and get involved with the managements as well. Um, we're involved with some things right now where stock was going down every day, uh, and and it was you know one of these things where well, what are we missing? Uh, well, we don't think we missed anything, um, but it's, it it does. It is hard to do because uh, certainly if you're not really uh, knowledgeable about about the asset and, and the business and so on, you can get you can get pushed out of these things. So that's a, that's a, one of the answers. The other thing I think is just personality. I just for whatever reason have this streak that I'm a contrarian in general, and the worse you know the worse things are and people think they are, so the more comfortable I am yeah. in, in doing it. And conversely, the the more comfortable people are, the less I am in, in, in what's going on. So I think that's a personality trait that, you know, some of the people I know that are pretty good at this um, have the same defect that I do. 
but it's it's uh, it's. <laughs> I, I sometimes think, thank goodness I found this line of work because I couldn't do this and a lot of other things. Um, but it's yeah. These were these were the some of the real crunch points in in my experience that um, were, were really required me to think very carefully about. First of all, did you make a mistake? Yeah. And secondly, um, if not. You know, how much more of this can you take? How much more of this do you want? Um, you know, we, we the, the, the arithmetic here, I think, is, is, is for me, is, is, is very uh, appealing. We get a lot of people that talk to us about, about volatility versus risk. And as you know, value investors think risk is not volatility. They think volatility is not Correct. risk. So this was a very volatile stock. And this is a good example of, of the kind of distinction that I think value investors make. Um, if you if you think about this particular company, and if you think about what the assets were, and forget about the business, the business was okay, but it wasn't great. But just think about the assets that you're buying at what price. Um, the most, I think, a lot of people today that think volatility is risk would have taken this experience and say, at ten percent of book value, this is a very risky stock. Yeah, we come to the exact opposite oh, conclusion. Yeah. Um, the, the, the idea is that as a, as a, as a price of an asset goes down, um, it, it is less risk, not more, even if it goes down, you know, whether it goes down quickly or slowly, uh, if it's going down, it's getting less risky and, and the, the speed with which it goes down is irrelevant to yes. us. Um, so we don't think this was, the, I don't know what the volatility on this stock was, but it was very high in those days. I, didn't, I think it was getting less and less risky as it goes along. But in addition to that, the expected return is going up. Yes. So this is one of the value investing is one of the only strategies I know of where you simultaneously, as things get cheaper, reduce the risk and increase the particular expected potential return. The, th the thing that strikes me about that, because I, I agree with every single word you said, there, but the, 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 the X factor, I think, if you go back to. Um, the Asian crisis you said there, you go back to that list you made at 10 o'clock at night. You did the work before, so you were ready. You knew what you wanted to buy. I think if you already own these things, uh, you know, that's why I'm very interested in, in your thought as it got cut off and you're, and you're long the stock. It's very easy if you've got a list of things that you want to buy when they go on sale. You, you're rubbing your hands as the, as the markets are falling. When you're long the stock and it's getting cut in half, and so is the value of your stake, that's a much harder thing to step in and say, no, the risk is going I, down, this is great. I, 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 you know, depending on how much liquidity you have left, that's yes. really a critical question. Yeah. And um, we oftentimes use this example when we're interviewing young people and say, you know, if you buy a dollar bill for 50 cents, which is what value investing supposedly yes. is, is it, is it a good thing or a bad thing if it goes to 40 cents? And the answer to that question is oftentimes uh, revealing of the candidate that we're looking at because most people say, well, it's a bad thing. Well. It depends. The answer is it depends. It's your time frame. It's always, it's and always time frame. Have you got any more liquidity? Yeah. So you, you'd be unhappy if you spent all your money on this before. But if you've still got some more liquidity, at 40 cents, you get this dynamic I was just describing. You have, you have now, instead of making a potential 100%, 50 cents on 50 cents, you now have a potential 150% yep. where you make 60 cents on 40 cents. And simultaneously, the risk is less. So the more that happens, even if I already own it, I'm not unhappy about it so long as I've got the ability to put more money to work in that position. And the position is getting smaller. Now, the inverse of that is true in the long, the short side. That's another, another yes. reason that shorting isn't the inverse. But as a, as a position uh, in your portfolio goes down, it gets smaller and it gets more attractive simultaneously.